Hi, I'm Shay McLean, curator of USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park. You know, one of the best parts of my job over the years has been to meet some of the men that served on this ship during the Second World War. They had some fascinating stories, and some of these stories we managed to record during our oral history programs. Their memories will live on, and we'd like to share some of those recordings with you here today. Well, they would sound general quarters, and all quad five gun crew would report to the gun. After re reporting to the gun, the first thing you put your headphones on, turn your water jackets on, and whenever personnel was reported, Hill, the pointer, Hatley was a trainer, your first four loaders and your first second loaders, then you checked your ammunition handlers. When the gun was manned, you reported to sky control that quad five was manned and ready. Then you waited for more direction from Sky Control. And then whatever procedure you was gonna take, if it was under air attack, they would say, stand by. You would take this cock and handle and put it to the rear. The first loader would reach out and get a round from the second loader and hold it right over the top of the automatic loader. And it, it, each time I would get the instruction, I would transfer it to Mr. Hill and tell him what to do. Manual, automatic. And whichever they wanted, the point and the trainer would mark the lines up and they'd shift it in. Then after the gun was loaded, then if we, Sky Control would report, Sky Control would then tell you. Then after we say, he'd say, commence firing after the guns were loaded, Mr. Hill, Perry, I'd say, commence firing. The first thing that I would do if I was in manual control, I would turn this and it would elevate the barrels. The trainer, would turn the mound, would go back and forth this way. And I put it in a, uh, another control, and I did it with a joystick. And I had complete control with the guns and the turn, moving back and forth, and guns up and down. And then, if we were under the Mark 14 sights, we'd go in another control, and the control would be over there on a little radar screen. All right. They could not do anything until I depressed these pedals. I did the actual firing of the gun. The gun captain would tell me to commence firing. I would mash, uh, cease fire, I let up on them. They could not fire the gun anywhere except here. These controls were very sensitive. In other words, you just touch it one way and the gun would go up and down, around like that. So we aimed through this and, and shot through here, but the Mark 14 sight was the most accurate. Then there it went over to a Mark 14 sight which controlled it. Then he got the message same as I did and he would squeeze it. Uh, when we ceased fire, he couldn't do anything if when Mr. Hill released the pedals. If you had a misfire on the guns, you'd report back to Sky Control that the guns were A, B, C, and D, Whichever gun mis misfired, you had, I had to get on, take it loose. Well, Mr. Hill would have to let the pedals up where the gun would cease fire for me to get over there, raise it up, raise the lead up, take a shield and slip down into clips, take the side cover loose. I had to take the side cover loose, we'd take a rod and punch it out. I had to take this round then and down and throw overboard. I told him if I had a misfire, when I had to bring it down to the main deck to throw it over, I asked them, what if it goes off before I get there? They said they'd notify my closest relative. That's said, that was it. But that very seldom ever happened because we always checked the ammunition primer to make, to make sure the primer was down enough to where it would go down past the loader and what they call in here the BM, which is the breach mechanism. Well, you were scared all the time. Uh, I remember one instance like that when one of the guns quit firing 
and I turned around and looked, and the fellow was trying to get in the ammunition hole. <laughs> he was stuck with his shoulders, and that's the reason that gun was had quit firing. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> they, uh, the gun captain got him back, started uh, firing the gun. You had to have ammunition going in. The ammunition came from the ammunition below. It came out in a little box, a metal box, with four clips to the box. And the first loader, the second loader, and so forth. The sight, when I put it in joystick, the elevation and movement like that would come through this little thing and I would look through and crosshair here. Uh, of course, you had to lead and let the plane run into the ammunition. You had to fire ahead of the plane and let the plane run into it. For manual operation, this was it. The only way the, the guns would fire was for me to press the pedal with my right foot. Uh, I had complete control of the actual firing of the gun. The gun captain would give me command to uh, commence firing, and I would mash the pedal. And it would keep firing until I let up. He say cease fire, I would let up on the pedal, and it would, would cease fire. That was my living quarters right in there. That was uh, 10th Division in there. And when General Quarters blew, you had three minutes to get from there down there to that 40 millimeter. And a lot of times, the Japs would be coming in before we got there. That little hole there in the splinter shield was due to a 40 millimeter shell penetrating through there. And it was during a battle, if I remember correctly, and we had to lower our guns so low when the Japs were coming in, skimming the uh, ocean line, that uh, the guy uh, lowered the turret too far, and that's where the hole got there, when the shells went right through the splinter shield. And when the Japs would come in at us, they'd come at us all angles, skipping the, the ocean line, and also they'd get up in them clouds where you couldn't see them and dive down on you. And we fired these barrels so many times that God only knows how many rounds went through them. Not only that, we fired them so many times. One time the barrels actually turned uh, red. And uh, before we went into the next battle, we had to change barrels on them. So I don't know what else to tell you. And, and the guys that uh, manned these uh, 40 millimeters, uh, we'd always say to ourselves, well, the next one may get us, but he never did. We, we, we come awful close, but never did get hit. We're just lucky to be here today because uh, we had a near miss back there where a Jap suicide bomber just missed the uh, ship. I remember one morning we was under air attack and one plane was coming from the bow to the stern. He was out. And we was at general quarters and they had to commence firing and we did and we could see chunks of fire come out of the fuselage, but it kept on smoothing on down and made a circle and it, it went in on, on the starboard. Uh, well, it's about midship a little farther down. They're just a great bunch of boys that, li that lived all together, and we all had fun, but we all had uh, duties to perform, and uh, uh, everybody should uh, serve the board there should have a big E, I'll tell you.